hello, and welcome to Staining University. My name is Caleb Broth. I'm the founder and CEO here at Stain and Seal Experts Fence and Deck Stains and Stain and Seal Experts Nashville Fence and Deck Staining Contractor. So if you're watching this, you're probably either in our Staining University Mastermind group or you're a new hire here at Stain and Seal Experts, or maybe you're just brushing up on some of your staining skills. And today we're talking all about deck staining and we're gonna get pretty heavy into that. It's gonna be about a 30 minute video. So get your, uh, get your popcorn and your coffee or whatever you need to get ready and let's do this. All right, so we're headed to the job site. First things first, we've got our uniform on, we've got our shirt tucked in and uh, we're gonna pull right into the neighborhood with our truck, our trailer or our van and we're gonna face the side door of the truck or van right up to the curb. That way it's easily uh, we can easily get in and out of the truck, get our equipment, and it goes right into the grass. That way, if there were a spill, it would be in dirt or grass and, um, or, or even just boot prints. It's going to be in the grass and not on the driveway or on the road. So keep that in mind. And then the first thing you're going to do after that, you're going to jump out, put your sign up. I'm pointing to one right over my shoulder here. Yard signs are very important for every company, for advertising. And it's usually the first thing we like to do. We like to put a put a yard sign out. And um, a lot of guys will start grabbing equipment and carrying it back to the yard. That's okay. And another, uh, you know, there's another train of thought that says, hey, we need to go out and look at what we're dealing with first. So if you want to get out and do a walk around of the job site first before you start moving any equipment, that's perfectly fine. So once that's done, then we're going to get started. We're going to dive into the video here and we're going to talk about uh, carrying sprayers, things like that. So here we go, we'll get into the first clip. It's a really good idea to never carry sprayers, airless sprayers, or any stain buckets, anything that might drip stain across the driveway. We always want to carry it through the yard and around the back side. We don't want to have coffee brown or pecan or walnut stain on this driveway. It's a lot easier to just go around than it is to clean it up later. All right, when we come to a job site, we've carried all our equipment over here and we've got it on a tarp. The reason we do that, can you show the grass here? Look at that. All right, come back to me. This is carpet, so we want to take care of this. So we put everything down on the tarp. If we have a spill, we're covered. All our equipment's in one place. We know where it's at. Our sprayer can go there, and that's it. That's what we do for decks. Now we're going to get started. Where this uh, sprayer is, it can cover the whole area, and we're good to go. Our water hose is on the other side. All right, we've got all our equipment down on a tarp. You can use cardboard. You can use plastic. Just something that you need to lay down to put your equipment on. It's gonna help you. Uh, you're gonna be less likely to leave equipment on the job, and that's gonna cost you time. You're gonna be less likely to have spills. You're gonna be less likely to throw a paintbrush down on the grass with stain on it and kill the grass. A lot of people spend two, 300 bucks a month maintaining their lawn, and they put fertilizer, they aerate it, they do everything that they're supposed to do, and the last thing we need is a staining contractor to come in and cause dead spots in their grass. So treat the grass just like their carpet, just like you would if you were working inside a house, you would protect the carpet, treat the grass the same way. Let's move on. Okay, so we're up against the house. We've not done any masking other than just the furniture down there. And we're gonna start by cutting this thing in. We're gonna cut the hole in next to the house in. We're gonna get the posts and everything that's right up next to the house. And we're gonna use these tools here to do that. Our brushes and our rollers. We got our little paint buckets right there for two of us. We're going to get this all the way down, all the way down to here, up against the house, and then we'll get these two porch pipes. Once we get those finished, we'll be ready to start masking and spraying. But right now, we got to get everything cut in. All right, once you've got your job site set up, it's time to do your cut-ins. The first thing we generally like to do on a deck is get it cut in. And I personally generally will start on the outside of the deck. You can start on the outside or the inside, it doesn't matter. But one thing to keep in mind, if you're doing a job early in the morning, there could be dew on the grass. And if you do the inside portion first, if you step on the wet grass and then on the deck, you can leave wet footprints on the deck and that could translate over into your stain job and you might be able to see those. So keep that in mind. On this particular job, it is 1 p.m. in the afternoon when we started it, so there's no fear of that, so we're starting on top. But keep those things in mind. You wanna get everything cut in and then you can start putting your plastic up if you're gonna spray or once you get it cut in and you're doing the whole deck by hand, you can move on and work your way back out. Okay, as you see, we're getting started. We've got our edges doing this cut in and see how the side of that board's not done yet. So I'm gonna show you my process. 
I try to take my brush and just let the very edge roll a little stain out and get right up to the house. I don't want to hit the brick with my brush because the brick will soak the stain up and it'll be a little spot there. And this side, we can just kind of take our brush on its edge just like that and let some of it go down in there and catch that little spot. And look at that, what a beautiful job. Same thing over here. When we get in the flat part of the deck away from the house, we can spray these cracks. But we really need to spend just a second getting them where the masking is going to be because we don't want to have to come back and do this later on top of a deck floor that's wet with stain or anything. We just go ahead and get it out of the way. Same thing on this side over here. We'll get it done. And we'll work our way around. Get to dip my brush off both sides. And just roll, push a little bit of that stain right in there. You don't have to get right up to it. The stain will bleed a little bit, so you can just let the stain do the work for you because it's gonna penetrate. It's gonna suck into that pores of the wood and it'll close up those, those gaps right up next to the house. We don't wanna leave stain puddled in these areas. We wanna kind of back brush it, drag it away and notice how I'm doing something a little different on each board because I don't want this hard line across here all the, way, all the way down like John's doing over there. John needs to pull that out maybe uh, a foot kind of like I'm doing or otherwise we're gonna have that hard line all the way down through there But uh, but that's the way it goes So depending on what type of stain product you're using you could end up with what's called lap marks or uh, uh, Things like that a lap mark is a line that you see through the finish After the job is done. It's where you your brush marks lapped over one another and, and where it lapped over, maybe it was a little more coating, something like that, and it's just a dark spot or a line. And we take a big chance of getting something like that if we run a straight hard line all the way through there. Um, so we prefer, and we have found it works better, to do a staggered cut in. So if you cut each board in a little bit differently, uh, you, you don't have that hard line pattern that, you're gonna, that your eye's gonna pick up on. So our eyes pick up on patterns. If you see a straight line, like the blue line across the bottom of this envelope, your eye is going to see it. If it's a very staggered, staggered and uh, random line pattern, your eye just won't see it. It's not gonna show up as much and it just gives you a little nicer finished looking product. Okay, as I get this cut in made on the house, things happen, right? Accidents happen. So we've got a little bit of stain splatter on this downspout. We use an oil-based stain, so that's not a problem. What you wanna do, when you're done with your area, you want to find those little speckles that you made, little mess ups, and you just wipe them with a rag. The stain will not stick to this stuff. It might make it a little oily, but all of that can be fixed. You wipe it all down, and when the job's done, if there's still a little oil residue on these downspouts, we'll just degrease them, and wipe them, uh, excuse me, we'll just degrease them, scrub them with a water hose or with a brush and water hose, rinse it off, and you're good to go. So no matter how beautiful the fence or deck stain job is, if your customer comes home and they see stain on the side of their house, on their downspouts, on their cars, grass, patio, you name it, they're gonna put all of their attention right on the mess up and not the beautiful job. So we've gotta keep in mind those things. And if we get a spill, we need to stop and clean it up. If we get some stain on the house, we need to stop immediately and clean those things up. You can't let them sit, you don't have time. We're talking about stain, and we don't need a stained house. So some things that you can use to clean those up are a dry rag. You always wanna use a dry cloth, a wet cloth, water and oil doesn't mix. So if you're using oil-based stain, use a dry cloth, and you can use a product, a degreaser, you can use some type of thing like that. We find that uh, sometimes the degreaser we make, if we keep them in pump-up sprayers, sometimes it's more convenient to keep just a little spray bottle of um, a product called Wesley's Bleach White. You can buy it at the dollar store, at auto parts stores, at Walmart, and it's made for cleaning tires, the white walls on tires, and it will take stain right off of hardy board, off of brick, off of concrete, downspouts, windows, you name it, it'll do it very quickly and uh, it's very convenient. If that doesn't work, we've got, a, you know, we've got the cleanup product that we make and other companies make degreasers too that do a little better job on maybe some harder to, to clean up things uh, if you waited too long. But get on it instantly. If things uh, happen and you need help, go get your partner. 
get them to help you because that's the most important thing is leaving the job site cleaner than we found it. All right, we're cut in all along the house. John's finishing this up. It's his first deck job, so he's getting, getting fun. But John did all this. You'll notice it's his first time and he's doing great. So right here, we're cut in. And at Stain and Seal Experts, we try to be the best in the business. So if you'll notice, John even cut in all the way up under this lip, all the way up next to the house. I mean, that's quality. You don't get that anywhere else. But make sure you do those. Go above and beyond, because one day your customer, they might drop their keys right there. They bend down to pick them up. And before they go in, they look up there and they go, look at that, a bald spot or a got spot? What are they gonna say when they look at your job? And we try to keep that in mind. So the last thing we need to do, we need to go down here and get these steps cut in where they tie into this concrete pad. We don't wanna spray down here on this. You wanna actually cut this in with a brush all the way up through here. This, this area here can be sprayed. We'll mask this plant off. We still need to cut this in by hand. But this area here, from about right here all the way back, anything over the concrete, we really need to try to do that by hand. We'll probably cut it in at the top. We'll probably cut it in to about right in here and then spray this with a really fine tip and uh, keep this concrete wet down. But we definitely want to cut it in here first because if we don't, uh, when we rinse this with water, it could wash our finish off. So we definitely want a nice dry finish around anything that's going to get uh, anything that's going to get wet down. So. That just calls for a steady hand with a brush in about five minutes and we'll have it done. All right, as you can see, we're on the other side here. We're doing this last cut in area and look at this bucket here. Look at that. Something an old timer taught me a long time ago is your bucket of stain cannot fall off of the ground. If you put it up there and you're in here working, a bee gets after you or you get stuck by a thorn, you come around too fast, you knock that down, there's concrete down here or something or this plant, you kill the plant, you ruin the concrete. Put your bucket on the ground and you won't have to worry about that. And just like I told you before, we've got the cut-ins done here. And we did get just a drop of stain on the concrete. Our degreaser will remove that, but we're gonna give the we're gonna give the stain just a moment to soak into the wood before we take care of that. I've got all of this done. All of that. We're underneath these are done, the end grain's done, and right up next to the house is finished. Now we're gonna mask this off. We'll get this bush covered, these these little flowers and we'll do our masking straight across the house. Those little kick-ins, all the staining is done from there in on the inside, as you can see. So we'll just mask straight across like it's not even there. All right, we're just about to spray. We'll get our sprayer set up, but notice I've got my brush on the lid so it doesn't make a mess on my tarp because I want to keep my work area clean for the next job. We've got our cut-ins made. The posts are done up high. We'll get the masking pulled and we'll be ready to rock and roll with this sprayer. All right, so now we want to set up our sprayer. Today we're using an airless, if you can't already tell. And what I'm gonna do, since the last job, we actually did a white fence where we painted the fence white. So there's water in this line right now. So I'm gonna clean the line out and I've got a purge bucket. And then I've got a bucket of half used stain that we started with this morning. And actually we started another job with it. We've only used maybe half a gallon so far. So I'm just pulling the end off of my gun and uh, it's taking a lot longer than it should for some reason. But anyways, so I'm just gonna hook that right there for now. I'm gonna turn my machine on, but before I do, come over here and check this out. The pressure here, I'm gonna turn this pressure way down low on the prime, because I don't want stuff blowing everywhere. So I'm gonna flip the power switch on. Before I do that, I'm gonna drop this lever right here. That's the prime. I'm gonna drop it down, turn it on. And if you look right here, I'm blowing out this line. Once stain starts coming out of this, then we know we're good to go. All right, so now look over here. I'm gonna flip this up. Now we're ready to go. And we're just gonna blow the line clear. Once stain starts coming out, we know we're good to go. Here it comes. I'm confident with that. And now I'm just gonna mix it. I'm just gonna let it circle through for a few minutes. 
And that's it, we're ready to go. So now I'm gonna take a tip, pick out what tip I want. I'm probably gonna start with the disc deck. I'm gonna start with a 415. All right. I'm gonna screw my tip on. Right before I get ready to tighten it down, I'll stick my tip in there. The cool thing about an airless sprayer is you're so versatile. You can use uh, water-based paint, stains, you can use oil-based, you can use lacquer, you can use, uh, we've even got spray, uh, sprayers that'll spray stucco and concrete through them. So they're very versatile, they're very powerful and very dependable. So that's why we really like these. And this 390 uh, is kind of the first level of a commercial grade sprayer. So that's why we use it. It's a good piece of equipment. It's got a filter here. It's got two filters down here. And uh, it's got another filter on the thing and it's got a great warranty. So that's why we're using it. Now we're gonna turn the pressure up. And come over here and you can see where we're running it. We're gonna run it right there for now. Uh, so you can kind of get an idea. You can turn it wide open and we do sometimes for fences, but for this deck, we're just gonna run it about right there. If we need to adjust it, we can. But that's pretty much it. This thing's ready to go. If you'll see, it's got an arrow on the on the uh, tip head. So we're gonna spray with it right there. And if we get a clog or something in our line, we just turn the tip around backwards, it swivels, and you can blow the line out, turn it back around, and you're ready to go. Normally, I like to use a extension pole. But apparently, our extension pole was not on the truck today, so we'll just be bending over using our back, and we'll get this thing sprayed in just a minute. Now, we're gonna go ahead and start masking the house off, and once that's done, we'll be ready to spray. I like to see a neat and clean job site. That's why we keep the tarp there and all of our equipment goes back on the tarp as we're using it. it. Makes it easy to find and less likely to leave it there. And that sprayer is positioned so that that 50 foot hose can reach the entire deck all around it. We don't have to move anything and we don't take a chance of spilling something. Now that Graco 390 only has three filters. I mentioned that it had four, that was a mistake. Uh, just got caught up in the moment, but it has a filter at the bottom uh, on the pickup tube, which is more of a screen. It's got a filter uh, in the pump itself, and then it's got a filter in the gun. And uh, I recommend you keep those things cleaned out, clean them up every couple of weeks or every couple of jobs, and you'll be in good shape. On this particular type of airless sprayer, we never clean the lines out unless we're running water to oil, if we're swapping back and forth. If we're using oil-based stain all the time, we just leave it in the line. It doesn't, it's not gonna dry in there. It's not gonna set up and get hard. Um, so you've got that option. You also got the option of running something like mineral spirits through it on every job, chasing out the old stain and just letting the mineral spirits sit in there. Neither way is wrong. I'm gonna spend another minute or two talking about sprayers. A lot of guys spend a lot of time worrying about sprayers. What you use for a sprayer really doesn't matter. An airless sprayer I really like for decks because you can go to big and small uh, tip sizes relatively quickly. If you're using low pressure, you're kind of stuck with just a flood and you're putting out a ton of product. And on decks, we all know that more is not always better. So for your spindles, if you're spraying wooden spindles, the first thing you need to think of is are we gonna get overspray on the grass? If you are, if it's in a place where you can get overspray on the grass, then you absolutely need to cover the grass. And if you're spraying a deck, I recommend you spray the spindles first from the outside. So all of that, any overspray goes on the deck floor. And if you're using a fine tip, like a 211, 213, 311, 313, you're not gonna flood the top of the deck with overspray. So you don't really have to worry about masking it. Once you get the outside done, you can spray from the inside but you need to mask the grass again if you're using a big tip that's gonna put overspray in the air. And on floors, on this job, I think we used a 415. A 415 will work, a 315, a 314, a 313. Any of those sizes work just fine, but you wanna focus in between the cracks. Instead of spraying each board straight on with your fan pattern, like that, you wanna go between the cracks. So, so you're gonna get half of this board and half of the next board, but you're gonna focus the center of your tip right in between the cracks. That's what we have found to be the quickest way to get the cracks done and you don't spend a lot of time going back and doing touch-ups later. The wind is starting to pick up and I know that when we run this plastic, we're gonna actually shove the plastic between the house and the deck, but there's a possibility that it could blow up and it could get some of this wet stain on the plastic and it could keep blowing and eventually it could roll back and it could get on this white mortar. So what I'm gonna do to combat that is I'm gonna grab this rag 
Let me see that for just a second. And I'm just gonna go down through here and wipe up any, any really wet stain, just like that. Just do a quick wipe on it. And uh, you can use your foot, just like this. Whatever you gotta do, just wipe it up. Just get, just get the wetness off. And uh, then we can put our plastic down. These oil-based stains are pretty heavy, the ones that we make anyways. Some are really heavy with thinners and you do need to go high with plastic. But uh, just because we're using nine or 12 foot plastic, we're gonna go as high as we can with this. And we're gonna wrap around the house about three or four feet. And I want it above the windows. I don't want any stain on the windows. So there we go. We're gonna get it stuck really good right here. And then we're gonna shimmy it down in between this post and the house. We're gonna go around this and then we'll be ready to go. So there you go, let's go. All right, I got my plastic stuck and I'm ready to start pulling it down through. So come closer and I'll show you how I do it. So I wanna go ahead and get my plastic all the way extended and I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna take a piece of it just like this and I'm just gonna do it just like dental floss. I'm gonna work my way through and it's not gonna be easy and I'm gonna work my way through. I'm gonna floss it back and forth. Until we get it all the way through and sometimes the plastic will tear but that's just the way it goes it looks like i made it there we go and pull it on down and cover up this box it looks like that's it Come the camera john if you'll pull that on around and you can start taping it and that's pretty much it that's that's what we're looking for we want it to go right through there we're going to cover that box and we'll go all the way down with it and this little area here, this little downspout, we may or may not cover that. It'll just depend on what the wind's doing because we've already cut in over there. So we'll see. But that's it. That's how we begin to mask. So now that we've got our plastic ran, we're starting to get it down the house. We got to figure out something to do with the area that's laying on the deck. What we use is our fence sign. It's a little small sign. I take it just like this sideways and I just take it and I shove it right down between the house and the deck, just like that. And that will do a better job than any kind of tape. Just gotta be careful not to cut your plastic. And that's it, you just run it right down there the whole way. Isn't that nice? So more on plastic. When you're in that plastic wrapping zone like we're in right now, we want to be looking for anything like all the furniture that's bunched up. All of that gets plastic wrapped. It's easier to wrap it than it is to clean it later. So we're wrapping all the furniture. We're wrapping any plants. There's one or two little bushes in this on this particular deck right up next. We're going to wrap those right before we spray. And then as soon as we're done spraying, those trees are going to be the first thing that we unmask if we're using plastic. I try to use uh, plastic very sparingly on foliage because foliage can get the greenhouse effect it gets hot on this one it's right next to the house it's shady it's not a big deal but an alternative for uh, for masking bushes and things like that are sheets and we generally keep sheets fitted sheets uh, that you would use on a bed in the truck and you can just wrap those right over plants and hit them with a water hose and they stay wet keeps the plant cool keeps the stain off and it's an easy thing to do concrete anything that's concrete or porous like brick you can wet that, you can just keep it wet with a water hose and if any stain gets on it, it'll set on top of the water and you can rinse it away. If there's a car nearby and you don't know who it belongs to, you need to find out and you need to ask them either to move the car or if you've exhausted all your energy trying to find the owner and you cannot or it can't be moved, wrap the car in plastic. Do it gently, do it neatly, so if somebody comes home and sees it, they're not offended, but you wanna wrap the car up, make it look nice and neat, and then as soon as the job's done, just pull the plastic and the car will look good as new. And if you need to, uh, on every job, I recommend that when you mask everything, take a couple of pictures of everything masked so that if a customer has a problem, like maybe uh, some of these hardy board homes, we see a lot of hardy board homes get stained by red clay from the rain, splashing red clay mud back up on the house and it will stain the hardy board. So if you took pictures showing that you masked the entire home, everything that, that could be uh, exposed to overspray was masked, then when the customer says, hey, I see these red speckles on my house, you need to clean that off because it's stained. You can say, no, sir, Mr. Customer, we masked. Here's some photos. That's actually uh, prob most likely something that's splashed up from the rain. We see that very, very often where we're located in our in our Tennessee area. But that's it on masking. Just it's it's safer to mask, 
than it is to uh, take a chance on something. Plastic is cheap and it only takes a few minutes to do that. On hardy board siding, if you're using, uh, if you're taping to hardy board, if we all know what hardy plank is, duct tape will pull hardy board finish off. Let me repeat that. Hardy board siding can be delaminated. I don't know what you call it, but it will completely remove the finish off of hardy board. And it's not just the paint that it removes. It'll remove it down to the inside of the board. So you've got a major repair on your hands if that happens. So on hardy board, use masking tape. On any other type of siding, I've not seen any issues using duct tape. It sticks to brick very well. It'll stick to windows, downspouts, but on hardy board, never, ever, ever use duct tape. It's a big no-no. Blue or green painter's masking tape works perfect on hardy board siding. Now that you've got everything masked, you can spray. And you're gonna see that we're not gonna spend really any time at all showing spraying technique because everybody's got their own technique that could take hours showing that. So just get in there, spray your job, and once the job is sprayed, I would go ahead and get my plastic down pretty quick. Once you're done with spraying, the next thing that needs to happen is get your plastic down. Plastic can hold stain and it can blow up against the house. Some stains um, are particularly have a lot of solvents in them and they can burn right through plastics. So the longer it sets on that plastic, the more likely it is to go through the plastic. So we really wanna think about pulling that down. And also don't be afraid to spend the extra money on the thick plastic because it will help you out on some jobs having that thicker plastic to work with. It gives you more time and it's less likely to blow away. All right, I'm ready to spray. I got my shield, I got my mask. You wanna wear this stuff, your health is important. If you gotta do this for a career, you wanna be able to do it for the long term. So get your stuff ready. My, my game plan on this deck is if you'll take a look at it, I'm gonna spray the skirting and the railing from the outside first all the way around. And then I'm gonna let the second man take his brush and roller and do the top cap because I really want a good thick coat on that top cap. And once all the outside's done, I'm gonna get on top and I'm gonna spray the railings from the outside. This one's gonna be pretty quick because we have aluminum spindles. We just wipe those down when we're done. But uh, once the outside's done, then we're gonna start getting on the floor. We'll get the floor sprayed. We'll focus on the cracks. Then we'll come back with a brush and roller and just hit the thin spots, roll it out flat and smooth, and we'll be ready to go. So uh, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time showing you the technique on spraying because most of you can figure that out. But we're just going to try to get this thing done, see how quick we can do it and how good we can make it look. So here we go. It's very important that we take health and safety seriously. So on a job site, we've got to do the precautions, and that's personal protective equipment. You'll notice I'm wearing uh, gloves. I'm wearing a mask, I'm wearing a shield, I'm wearing a hat underneath to protect my hair, and I've got a full suit on that I can breathe, the suits that we wear breathe. A lot of the stains on the market are very high in solvents, they're very high in very bad things. A lot of stuff on the market is not even labeled properly just because of trade secrets and they can get away with that. So don't breathe it. Don't be a knucklehead. You want to do this for the long haul or even for 15 minutes, you don't want to breathe it. Some people are highly susceptible or allergic to certain things and others aren't and they can take a little more of it. But I don't care what product you're using, water-based, oil-based, or even if you're pressure washing, you need to protect your lungs, you need to protect your eyes, and you need to protect your skin. It's the biggest organ on your body and it absorbs everything. Um, I've interviewed quite a few guys who have used certain products that I won't name for 20 years and uh, they have diminished lung capacity, like 50% lung capacity. My uncle used to paint cars. He never wore a mask. He has brain cancer now as an, uh, as an older person. Um, I know another guy who is in the printing business who did worked with printing inks on a regular basis and he had uh, kidney cancer. So there's so many things in these products that you don't know about and what doesn't hurt you today could come back and hurt you tomorrow. So it's very important to me, to any other business owner, and to employees for their health and safety. Everybody needs to wear the personal protective equipment. Do it, I don't care if I see you not wearing it on my job site, I'm gonna hit you with a stick. So make sure you wear the stuff and make sure you stress to your teammates to wear it. It's not worth the risk, so wear your mask, wear your gloves, wear your goggles, do it right. All right, we got all the spraying done. Now what we're gonna do is pull our plastic down, get all that pulled down. We're gonna roll it up inside of itself so we don't drip stain everywhere. We're gonna set it over here right beside our tarp and we'll stick it in a bag. We don't wanna drag that across the yard. We wanna stick it in a bag here on the site. And then we're gonna go through and one, one of us is gonna back brush the floor, get any thin spots, get any puddling, back brush all that. And another one will go around and do the top cap. 
and then we're gonna get uh, dry rags and we're gonna do all these spindles. These are metal spindles, so we gotta wipe those clean, get any of that oil-based stain to it. It won't stick, but if you leave it there, it's gonna be visible, so we just need to wipe them all clean. And that's pretty much it. Then it's just a cleanup game. We'll get all our stuff back on the truck and we'll hit the road, so we'll get started with that. So now that you've got your spraying done, it's a good time to go around and you can have one man doing all the touch-ups, looking for spots, just looking up, looking down, finding anywhere that there's a thin spot or a missed spot. And uh, the other guy can go ahead and start putting on a second coat on the top rail, on the stair treads, and on the floor. That's what we call the flats. Any, any flat surface, we like to get two coats on because those areas take the most abuse from the sun, from the rain, from feet traffic, things like that. So you can do that with what we, uh, what we prefer is just a big, big brush. The Deck Boss brush works very well. There's a couple car wash brushes out there that work. A roller tends to sling more stuff and just generally will make more mess than it actually, uh, than it's worth. So I, I recommend a brush. If you're right up next to the house, pull the brush backwards. Don't do the back and forth. You'll sling stuff everywhere. So just brush everything out. You can put a second coat on it. It doesn't have to be heavy. You're just, the second coat is more just to get any thin spots and to smooth everything out and make for a really nice, clean finish. Um, you want to then wipe all your spindles down, anything metal, gate hardware, any uh, brackets that hold handrails on, anything like that, lamp posts, whatever's mounted to the deck. If you got a, you know, the barbecue grill has a deck uh, gas shut off up there, unwrap that with your plastic, or whatever you did with it, wipe it all down, make sure it's dry and clean, and then you're pretty much done. You're kind of in the cleanup, almost time to go home stage. And again, we don't wanna mess up here. We wanna be very vigilant about touch-ups. And you're gonna see me go over a few touch-up spots that we missed and uh, I recommend hitting it with fresh eyes several times. And you can also have your customer come out and look over the deck with you. And uh, they will see things that you don't see. They're gonna ask questions about things that, you, that you're just not thinking of. And it's a great time to go ahead and head off any complaints, any worries, any concerns right there, address them so we don't have to make a second trip. Looking for touch-ups. All right, now I want you to look at this deck from an inspector's point of view. When you get this project finished at Stain and Sell Experts, you're gonna probably have a project manager or a supervisor come out and inspect the job before you leave. Or at the very least, your crew leader's gonna check it. And we're looking for stuff like this right here. And so we're gonna do a touch up. You need to be doing this before you ever load your truck up. That way all your equipment's here and it's really easy to get the spots touched up. Wiping any heavy excess stain, catching any of the cracks. See these three cracks right here? We need to get those cracks. Got a little bit of a light spot right there that I'm gonna hit. And we still need to wipe those spindles a little better. But you just gotta walk through do some, do some due diligence, check up on your work. You need to look at these projects as the customer is going to look at it. So the customer is going to be sitting back here having coffee, barbecue grilling, the kids are playing, and they're going to see things that you don't see. Uh, for instance, let's see if we can find a crack that needs to be hit. As we walk, look right there. I see a crack right there that needs to be hit, and it can quickly and easily be hit with a brush. So just look around and find things like that. I want you looking up underneath the rails. I want you to looking right up and around the house, up close in the tight spots. Just make sure you really did a good job. See this wetness on this top cap? We really need to wipe that off. And we can use a just a wet, or not a wet, but a dry rag to do that. And uh, we'll go through and do these touch-ups, get a few things cleaned up, and then we'll give you a final walkthrough. All right, we're finished. Right now is the time when everybody gets in a big hurry and they start making mistakes when we get a job finished we really want to pay attention to our surroundings make sure we don't leave things behind make sure we don't miss spots and uh, the last thing i want to see get loaded on the truck is your degreaser your touch-up bucket with stain and a brush and your water hose the last thing you want to do is spill a bucket on the way to a truck and you don't have a water hose to clean it up or degreaser or rags or something like that so now we're going to do a quick inspection and we'll hit the road 
So now that you're finished spraying, doing touch-ups, you pulled your plastic down, you, you're just about ready to go, it's another good time to walk back through and do a check for any missed spots, and now we're gonna wipe the floor down. The reason we wipe the floor down only on oil-based penetrating stains, by the way, is because it removes any puddling stain, any excess stain, any drips. It's gonna remove any footprints that you might have left up there, which is important. Can't leave any footprints. And you're gonna do that on the treads, on the top cap, and on the floor. Those are called the flats. We're gonna wipe those with a rag. You can set two rags, uh, t-shirts, whatever you're using to clean things up with. Set them on the deck, put them under your feet, go all the way down each board, come back. It takes maybe 10 minutes to do a whole floor on a deck the size that we're looking at here in this video. The reason we do that is basically because when we started wiping decks down and removing any excess stain, our callbacks went away. It just eliminated most warranty work and we're, we're much happier not having to go back out on jobs. So wipe your decks. It's a requirement here at Stain and Seal Experts and I recommend that you do the same thing as well. Again, you're going through, you're checking for touch-ups as we're doing this because you always want to keep your eyes for the cracks. You're looking underneath rails. Uh, there's nothing worse than getting home getting your job done, doing three more jobs, and then next week they call and they say, hey, there's this little spot, can you come back and touch it up? So just be very vigilant to touch ups. And you wanna speak with your customer now at, uh, about our maintenance plan, you wanna to talk to them about staying off the deck. Staying off the deck is gonna be a 24 hour period right after we're done. Just tell them to stay off of it. And then 72 hours after that, we want light traffic only. And most people are perfectly okay with that. If there's a party or something going on, usually we're not gonna schedule a job right before a party. So once that's taken care of, your customer understands it's you wanna do two more things. You wanna to try to get paid from them. Say, you know what, our office sent you an invoice. It'd be great if you could go ahead and give us a check now. If you're gonna pay with a card, you can call in the office and pay right away. And secondly, we wanna talk about our maintenance plans. There's maintenance plans that we offer that are, we come in once a year, clean the fence, clean the deck, and then every two years, every three years, whatever plan they choose, we're gonna do a maintenance coat of stain. So once that's done, you're good to go. A little quick tip I wanna sh show you guys. It is very easy to make this mistake and we made it, but check this out, a leaf. Same color as the deck, look at that. Is that little piece of leaf worth making a trip back across town? I don't think so. But yeah, look at that. Gotta keep your eyes out. I've got a little piece of trash here from a tarp we opened and it's really tempting to walk by the customer's trash can right there and wanna throw that in. But the best thing you can do is put it back in the trailer, put it in your own trash bag and we throw our own trash away. We never wanna use the customer's trash can. All right, here is the top view of this deck. We wanna to check to make sure everything's done. All the hinges, all the gate hardware's wiped off. Spindles are wiped. And one thing that we noticed on this job is that they reuse these spindles from an old deck. So they have an old stain on there. That's not our stain, that's an old finish. And that's just something you wanna point out to your customer. And, and they probably already know, but you need to make sure that they know it. Make sure you mention it. Make sure you check your window seals. We're looking for any stain, any overspray anything like that, any tape on the walls, anything. Oh, right there's a prime example. That's why we use orange tape. We don't wanna leave any of that sticking around. And I closed this gate earlier while wiping these hinges and I noticed this little spot. And look at there, right outside the back door, if he's sitting in there drinking coffee, he's gonna look out there every morning and see that. And he's gonna think how crappy a job we did if we don't take care of that. So it's a little nuances, it's the little details that really can set you apart and that's what makes stain and seal experts that's why we can call ourselves experts because we go the extra mile we do the job right the first time and when you come on the stain and seal experts team that's just what's expected of you and uh, you'll never go home wishing you had done a better job if you just do it right the first time so that's it we've got any any wet stain we've got it wiped up uh, and these little few spots here just from touching up some spots we saw but that's it we really got a really good blend here from the covered area to the uncovered area it didn't take quite as much stain up here, but it, it, all, it all worked out pretty good. It looked good. This deck was really pressure washed pretty hard before we got here by the homeowner. And uh, so there was some little bit of fuzz. You see some of that white haze, that's just fuzz. Nothing much you can do about it. We told them up front that there'd be some of that. And they get it, they understand. So that's it. This deck took from 1 p.m. 
until 5 p.m. with two guys, myself and, a, and another another man who had is actually on our sales team. He had never stained a deck before, and we thought we'd give him a shot, let him get out and figure it out, see what it's like to do these jobs. So that's pretty much it. That dark spot right there is just a wet stain. We had a thin spot there, and we touched it up. So that's it. Here's the stain we're using. Stain and Seal Experts, deck stain and sealer, low VOC, two-year warranty, straight oil stain. This is like the old school good stuff. You just can't get it anymore. So it's a real timber oil and a real, uh, but it's got uh, all the good stuff in it. It's water safe. You know, this thing, it could come a pretty good rain right now and we'd be all right. Knock on wood, we hope it doesn't happen, but it's all right. There you go. Done our walk around. We know the spot on the gate we got to touch up, and that's pretty much it. Ready to hit the road. And if you can, always get the customer to walk the job with you, which the customer has. They're happy. They love it. And they've already paid us. Anytime you can get paid, it saves us a trip. It saves the customer a stamp. And it really helps out your office staff. So anytime you can get payment, go ahead and do it. All right, I appreciate you guys watching this video, and I want you to go back and watch it over and over again. You'll pick up little things as we go, and uh, as we progress with Staining University, we're gonna bring you more and more videos, showing you more and more tips. But right now, we're going with the broad approach. We wanna give you the broad idea of what's going on, and as we tune things in for you, as you get better, we'll get really fine-tuned, and we'll go over really the nuances and things that really uh, just help you get your job done faster, equipment, things like that. But as for right now, that's it. Go back and watch the video and we'll see you on the next one.